When he got there, he wrote down two more words on that little book. And the little two words were, no retreat. No funds, no retreat. Some time went by, and he decided to embark upon the ministry, study for the ministry. This made the father outrageous. But unbeknown, the unforeseen transpired. And one day, the father received a phone call from a medical doctor. And you could almost tell at the other end of the line it was not good news. And the message was, come quickly, your son is desperately ill. His father thought maybe this was the last time he would see his son, made his way to the hospital room. And he arrived just minutes too late. His son had just transpired. He was shocked and he was sad, he was distraught. And all the thoughts began to come back to his mind. All the opportunities he had to make it and to support his son. He went back to his dorm and he began to gather in a little box, the little pittance that his son had. And he found a little diary. As he opened the pages, he read the words written down there. The first two words, no funds, no retreat. But then there were two more words written in that little diary. And it says, no regrets. No funds, no retreat, no regrets. It pays to serve the Lord, amen? amen. It takes a lot of faith to not be healed. All of us have suffered the loss of loved ones. All of us are sick in some way or the other. All of us are like a broken water pot. As the story is told of the pot bearer who would go down to the well every day and, and bring fresh water for his master. And every day he made the trip he would bring back fresh flowers and put it in the vase in his master's dining table. And the allegory says that one day one of the pots decided to speak to the pot bearer because every time he went on to the well, he only delivered half full. So he spoke to the pot bearer and said, I feel so bad because I didn't deliver as the other pot, a full pot of water. And the pot bearer said to the broken pot, he said, the next time I go down to draw water, I want you to notice something. And he went down as usual and he, he brought back the water and he picked, he, he plucked the flowers. And he put it in the vase in the master's table and he said to the pot, did he notice anything? He said to the pot, I knew that you had a crack on your side. But I took the opportunity to plant some flower seeds on your side of the tracks. So every time I would go down to draw water, I would pick fresh flowers and decorate my master's table. I am saying to us this morning that God knows that all of us has a crack in our side. Amen. All of us have some flaws and some faults. All of us are in a mixed up, messed up situation, but he takes advantage of the crack. He takes advantage of the brokenness and we can still be a blessing to him. Amen. All of us are in a messed up situation. That's why we need power outside of ourselves. We need power from above. Jesus knew what he was getting when he bought us. Amen. Sometimes you go and you buy a car and instead of getting what you paid for, you get a lemon. But Jesus knew that he was buying a lemon. And he knew that he can make some lemonade. What do you say? Amen. 
God loves us. Amen. Jesus said in Gethsemane, Father, if it be possible, let this come. Let this come. He, all his life, all his life, he prayed for others. He healed them, he taught them, he clothed them, he fed them, he made them feel important, they were special, and they were, they were unique in the sight of God. But at this time, he began to feel the weight of sin. Imagine you, you bow down sin from the time of Adam all the way down to the end of time into one cup. And Jesus looked at the cup and he had to drink that cup. Sin was so offensive to God that he thought that the separation would be eternal. He could not see beyond the portals of the grave. He could not tell of the final acceptance of the, of the sacrifice on behalf of the human race. Amen. He could not see himself coming from the grave a conqueror or telling of the Father's acceptance of the sacrifice on behalf of the human race. And he said to his disciples, I don't want you to pray for others, I want you to pray for me. Just pray for me. And the Bible says that he took Peter, James, and John the closest to him. And he he said to them, just pray for me. He went a little further and he fell on his face and crushed on the ground and he began to grow the grass in the ground and he began to cry out and, uh, and he could feel the, the agony and, uh, and, and, and uh, the drops of sweat was mingled with blood. He, he began to feel that his soul was being crushed out. And he began to cry to the Father, if it be possible. I don't want to go through it. It takes a lot of faith, friend of mine, not to be delivered. It takes a lot of faith not to be healed. But Jesus said, nevertheless, not as I will, but as thy will be done. Amen. Friend of mine, it takes a lot of faith to not be healed. Amen. God loves every single one of us. Let this man be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Who being in the form of God, he was a hundred percent God, amen? amen. Taught him not robbery to be equal with God. But made himself of no reputation. He came as a suffering Messiah. He took upon him the form of a servant, was made in the likeness of men. It was even an ultimate insult just to made in the form of creation, which he created. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death. Even the death on the cross. Paul reiterates what he says. He said, even the death on the cross. Why did he say that? You see, the cross was invented by the Phoenicians. Then the Egyptians embraced the cross, and when Rome came along, they modified the cross, and they used it for capital punishment. It was a Roman death machine. The cross was an instrument where it was used for capital punishment. Only runaway slaves and hard criminals ended up on the cross. Jesus was not, was not a runaway slave. Neither was he a hard criminal. How did he end up on the cross? Because part of the Lord Israel was anybody who was hung on a tree or crucified on the cross, which was part of a tree, was under the curse of God. And even your relatives were told not to feel sorry for you. As a matter of fact, if you stand before the judge in those days, and the judge would say to you that your body should be shot through with arrows until you die, you could come back to yourself and look forward for a part in the resurrection. That was an easy sentence. If the judge would say that you should be fed to wild animals and you should be consumed until you die, you could come back to yourself and still look forward for a part in the resurrection. But if the judge would say 
that you will be hanged on a tree or crucified on the cross, then you are under the curse of God. And you could not look forward for a part in the resurrection. That's why Paul says, even the death of the cross, only one individual ever died. Amen. All others are asleep in the grave. Amen. The death that Jesus died on the cross was and is eternal to that of the second death, in which there is no resurrection. Amen. The question is, what made it possible? What made it possible for Jesus to come from the grave the third day? If the death on the cross was equivalent to that of the eternal death, his love, friend of mine, the love of God is stronger than death itself. Yeah. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the most important place that he gave the greatest gift, that whosoever, the world is invitation, the simplest trust that believe in him should not perish the greatest contrast from eternal death to eternal life. Yeah. The greatest gift that anybody could receive is the gift of eternal life. Yeah. And by the way, eternal life, friend of mine, is a gift from God. Yeah. God does not know us anything. Salvation is a gift. It is a hundred percent God's doing. Our part is to cooperate with the program. Amen. Amen. Just to cooperate with God. We need to put our hands in the hands of that man. Amen. 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 Who walked the dusty roads and the rocky places of Palestine. Amen. Everywhere he went, he was doing good. The blind saw, the deaf heard, the lame leaped for joy. The leper was cleansed, the demoniac was restored to his right man. Even the dead was raised alive. As someone told an allegory about hell and the grave, Hades, death said to the grave, if I kill him, you going to hold him? And on that Friday afternoon, Jesus triumphed on Calvary when he said it is finished. And death said he thought he had got the victory over Jesus. And that said to Hades the grave, I did my part, now it's your turn, you gotta hold it. And Jesus was placed and in the tomb. And the grave said to that seal the tomb with Roman water. Put a huge stone in that grave, and I'm gonna hold him here. But then we got to hearing some rumors. And on Saturday evening, he came back running to the grave and said, Oh, grave, have you still got him? And the grave shouted back, I tell you, Mr. Dad, don't worry, I got him. But on early Sunday morning, Mr. Dad came and said to Mr. Grave, have you still got him? And Mr. Grave shouted back, Well, it happened like this. <laughs> You see, there was a bright light and a being descended from glory. And I believe that being had to switch on his reverse gear because if he had not put on his reverse gear, he would have split this earth in two, even though there was a mighty earthquake. Amen. And the elite Roman soldiers fell back like dead men. And with one finger, he just rolled over the stone. And there was a voice heard from heaven Jesus. Your father called me, uh, and then said, uh, Grave said to me, said that I tried to hold him, but, 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 but somehow we just got up, and he just walked out, and he looked over his shoulder and holy and mm, holy scorn, and he insulted both of us. He said, Oh, Dad, where is your sting? Oh, Grave, where is your victory? I'm alive. And I'm alive forevermore. Amen. Friend of mine, if Jesus be for you, Amen. one of these days, Paul says, this corruptor must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality, and what is corruption shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on 
immortality, then shall be brought to pass and say, that is swallowed up in victory. Amen. Jesus has conquered them. Amen. Amen. And because he lived, you and I can live also. Amen. Amen. We can face tomorrow despite of all that we are going through, of whatever we are suffering. Because Jesus has gone this way before. Amen. Yeah. We can look forward for a part in the resurrection. One of these days, those pearly gates are going to swing back on those glittering hinges. Amen. We're going to stand on the sea of glass. We're going to sing that victory song. And there's going to be no more sickness. Amen. 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 There's going to be no more pain, no more sorrow, no more crying, no more eyeglasses. No more wrinkles in our faces, no more false teeth, amen. amen. No more gray hair, no more arthritis, no more cancer, no more hospitals, amen. amen. No more death, it's going to be all right. Amen. When Jesus comes again, amen. he's amen. coming back with power and great glory. I want to be that number. Amen. When the saints go marching in, amen. amen. This is our hope. And what a day that will be. Amen. What a day of rejoicing that will be. So let us not be discouraged. Let us not give up. Let's hold on to the unchanging hands of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let us put our hands in the hands of Jesus. And nothing can pluck us out of his hands. Amen. Amen. If God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. And in closing, friend of mine, I just want to remind us of the fate of the apostles. They all died in Martha's death. Matthew suffered martyrdom by being slain with a sword at the distant city of Ethiopia. Mark expired at Alexandria after being cruelly dragged through the streets of the city. Luke was hanged upon an olive tree in the classic land of Greece. John was put in a cauldron of boiling oil, but escaped death and then he was banished out in the Aegean Sea in the Isle of Patmos. Peter was crucified at Rome with his head downwards. He said, I'm not worthy to die the way my Lord was crucified by that rascal Nero. James the Greater was beheaded at Jerusalem. James the Less was thrown up from a lofty pinnacle at the temple and then he was beaten to death with the fullest club. Bartholomew was flayed alive. Andrew was born to a cross when he preached to his persecutors until he died. Thomas, who was run through the body at the lands of Caramandel in the East Indies. Jude was shot to death with arrows. Matthias was first stoned and then he was beheaded. Barnabas of the Gentiles was stoned to death at Salonica. Paul, after various tortures and persecutions, was at length beheaded by Emperor Nero. Such was the fate of the apostles. But precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of the saints. Amen. We weep not as those who have no hope. Because we have this hope we can face tomorrow. Amen. With confidence, with assurance that all is not lost. Yes. It takes a lot of faith to not be healed. It takes a lot of faith to not be healed. I want to give you one more passage. It's taken from, and if you would turn with me to the book of Philippians, I must leave you this passage. God needs these honor gods. Amen. As a matter of fact, it's from Hebrews 11, reading from verse 35, in closing. Hebrews chapter 11. Reading from verse 35. It says, Women received their dead, raised their life again. And others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trials of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. 
They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with a sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains, and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise, received not the promise of deliverance. We don't read these passages too often, but they seal their eternal destiny in death, knowing that one day they will live again. Job said, though one destroyed his body, I know that my Redeemer lived. Yes. And I will see him at the latter day. Not another, but I will see my Savior. One of these days, amen. amen. May God bless us. May God keep us faithful. Trust and obey, friend of mine. There is no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Let us stand as we sing this closing hymn. Number 531. As our singing evangelist comes to us. Amen.
say, this is your commitment. Why don't you indicate by raising your hand? I just want to pray for us this morning. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercies. We thank you, Lord, for your kindness, for your keeping power. Thank you, Lord, for being so good to us. Every one of us is going to be tested and tried as though there is not another upon the face of this earth. We're going to be tempted to doubt your providence. But Lord, we ask that you will give us the faith to keep trusting in Jesus. May we encourage each other, may we support each other. We ask, O oh Lord, that our names will be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So when Jesus comes again in all his exalted glory, that none of us here will be missing, but we'll be in that number when the saints go marching in. That all that great getting up early will pop up from the graves like popcorn. Amen. Never to part again. Because this earth is going to boil like a kettle on the stove. There will only be two groups. We don't want to be in that group who will worship to the rocks and mountains and say to the rocks and mountains, follow us. But we want to say, this is our God. We have waited for him and he will save us. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for being so good to us. Keep us safe, keep us faithful unto you. And as we leave this place, we ask that you will dismiss us with your choicest blessings. Never from your presence. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you.